How are you, my friends? This is part two. I'm presenting questions 12 to 23 from the 50 old exams review questions. This will cover the algebra course lectures from 13 to 23. So let's start. Question number 12. We need to find the solution set of this question. 2x minus 1 all to the power 2 over 3 is equal x to the power 1 over 3. The solution consists of, you know, read just one positive integer, one negative integer, etc. You can read it and try it. Let's see. See, we have here squared in the power and we have one over three, that's the index here. So this is the cube root. So we can cube both sides here. See, cube all the equation on both sides. We can cancel the three. So we have two x minus one squared is equal to x. Since we have an x here, we can expand it. If we have a number, let's say seven or 10 or nine or 12 or 50 or any number, just take the square root. So this one, four x squared minus four x plus one is equal to x. Bring the x there, we have to make it zero. We have to make it zero. This is a quadratic equation. So we factor it easily, four x minus one, x minus one. So x will be one over four or x will be one. So let's see here, one positive integer, this is a positive integer here. And one positive rational, one positive rational, you can check there. And then the answer, one positive integer, one positive rational number. You have to know the positive integer, rational, irrational. So this is the answer is D. Question 13 is normal question. We need to perform the indicated operations. So how many operations we have? Division. We have subtraction inside the brackets. So for sure we have to go inside the brackets and use the order of operations, simplify. Listen here carefully, you have two minus three y, three y minus two. We have seen this in the first part one or two times. So we have to change one to be like the other, then we can subtract. So three y minus two here, you see, I just, I'm explaining here, three y minus two. If you take a minus out, it will be minus two minus three y. This one is equal to this one. So if you go to the question, 7y minus 6 here over 3y minus 2 becomes 7y minus 6. This is the same numerator over minus 2 minus 3y. So you have to put the minus. Okay, so when you put the minus now with this minus becomes plus here in the middle. And now these are the same. So when these are the same denominator, we can add the numerator. Remember, when you have division, something divided by something, you leave the first one, so y minus three, y plus three, then you multiply by the reciprocal. So this one, you change it to multiplication, two minus three y becomes up, and this one down, it's three y squared plus seven y minus six, you have to factor it. You see, you have to factor this one. So it's three y minus two, y plus three. Now we see any cancellation. y plus three, y plus three canceled, uh, we have two minus three y, three y minus two, when you cancel, you should get also minus one again. And then y minus three is there left. So either we write y minus three in the bracket minus outside, or you can include the minus, distribute, becomes three minus y. This is correct and good answer. This is a correct and good answer. Test the equation for symmetry about x-axis, y-axis, and the origin. That's an easy question. This is an equation that has a graph and we have to test symmetry without graphing. So to test the symmetry for x-axis, replace y by minus y. You have to replace it there. And then the absolute value of minus y is the y. This one also, we have x minus y inside. So it will be the absolute value. We come back equivalent equation here. So yes, this one is symmetric about the x axis. Now, if you replace x with minus x, see you have a minus in the middle outside. So this is not the same equation as the given. So not symmetric about the y. If you replace in the origin 
we have to replace both x by minus x and y by minus y, you will get also again minus in the middle here. So this is not symmetric about the origin. This is a nice question, I think. If we have one plus square root of two i, one minus square root of two i are the solutions of the quadratic equation here. Find the discriminant. See, I gave you the solution, x1, x2, solution of this. And we have to find k for sure, we have to find m. Remember, we have small a, small b, small c. This m, min, m minus one, you have to bring the one there, equals zero. And then use the sum and the product. I think you have seen this in the, in the algebra course lectures, the sum minus b over a, this is only for quadratic, the product c over a. So the sum, I just add them. See, that's two. You just add the solutions. That's two. Equal minus b, so minus k plus one over one. Cross multiply here, so k will be minus three. The product c over a, just multiply them. See, when you multiply them, there is a complex numbers here. The answer should be three. m minus one over one. So m minus one is equal to three, m will be four. If you put four in the equation and you put k minus three, you get this equation, x squared minus two x plus three is equal to zero. Find the discriminant, b squared minus four ac, minus four a and c. So this is uh, four minus 12 is minus eight. That's why we have a, a complex solutions. 16, find the value or the values of the D if the points are collinear. So we have point E, point Y, point F. Collinear means on the same line. Easy. If you have a line where we have three points that lie on the same line, we can take the slope of any, any two points. So I can take the slope of EY here. I can take the slope of EF. I can take the slope of YF or FY or FE, any two points in any order. That's the formula for the slope. Y2 minus Y1 is divided by X2 minus X1. Find the slope of EY, you see here. Just be careful about the numbers. D minus one here, minus the five, over three minus minus four. Same thing here for E, E is there and F. D minus five, one minus minus four. Just go for simple, simple algebra arithmetic here. Cross multiply, D will be five over two. You can check it, please. Number 17, we need to write the complex number one plus i divided by one minus i all to the power one or three in standard. You know one or three is big number here and we cannot distribute the power because we have pluses and minuses. So let's go inside and multiply by the conjugate. See the whole idea, jump inside and multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. You see one minus i is given just I multiply one plus I, one plus I up and down. This becomes squared and this becomes one squared plus one squared because the formula, you have to remember the formula A minus BI, A plus BI, it's A squared plus B squared. So this is two and this one by the perfect squared, one plus two I plus I squared, I squared is minus one, this will cancel. So only we have I to the power one or three. Then divide by four as usual, take any power on the i, divide by four, take the remainder three, i cubed with no minus i. So it's zero minus i. Now let's see question 17. Big square root of four small square roots inside. We need to simplify. As we did here, just remember the idea here. You see the idea? Jump inside. Yeah, let's jump inside here and rationalize. Jump inside. See, big square root, very big, two meters long. Take this one here, multiply by the conjugate, square root of three plus square root of two. And then this becomes squared, and this becomes three minus two, which is one. This one, we have something squared, like five squared, seven squared, two squared, 
it will be, you know, put absolute value, but we know these are positive numbers. So the answer is square root of three plus square root of two. Find the equation of the line perpendicular to this line and passing through the midpoint of A and B. So we know our line will pass through the midpoint of AB. So we have to find here the midpoint, capital M maybe you can call it. And then this line here, perpendicular to this line, 3x plus 9y minus 27 is equal to zero. You can make a sketch if you like. So our line, let's find the midpoint, okay? So I call it the midpoint here. So the midpoint x1 plus x2 over two, y1 plus y2 over two, so it's uh, four minus two. That's the point I'm going to use here in the, in the formula. You see the formula, y minus y1, m into x minus x1. So x1, y1, I use it from the formula. Our line, the line we need, the equation we need is perpendicular to this line. So let's find the slope here. To know, you know, to, to find the slope, solve for y. So solve for y, take this on the other side, divide by three. Okay, divide by nine, because this is nine y. So one minus one over three, and there is a three there. So we, what we need is only the slope here, minus one over three. So the product of the slopes is minus one. So our slope m is three, because three times minus one over three becomes minus one. Why? Because they are perpendicular lines. So put it in the equation and simplify. Find the domain of the equation by graphing. Now you can find the domain later, maybe after a few lectures in the algebra, five, six lectures maybe, easily this one. But let's graph this. See, no x, x is equal to something square root here. So it should be positive, but we cannot say all the positive numbers because there are conditions here on the y also. We need, you need to graph this actually. Just to know the shape of the graph, if you square both sides directly, you will get the idea. If you square both sides here, see square both sides to check. If you square both sides, you get x squared is equal to 16 minus y squared. x squared plus y squared is 16, that's a circle. But see, the, our graph is not a circle. It's half a circle because x equals positive. See the positive here, only the positive x, only in quadrant one and quadrant four. X equals something positive. If we have a minus there and the outside, if you have a minus, you can take the half circle in quadrant two and three, that one, because x negative. Now x positive. So the center here is zero, zero and radius four. So instead of drawing the whole circle, this is a whole circle here, you see? You know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. That's a big circle, a whole circle. But we take x, take the condition here, x greater than zero, why? Because positive square root here, outside nothing means positive. So the domain are the values of the x here. So the only values of the x will be starting from zero, we can accept that until four. Okay, so zero to four closed interval, that's the domain. Maybe a little difficult. This is not easy question. If A, B and C and D are the points of the intersection of the line Y equals one and the circle. So just imagine a circle and put line horizontal. Y equals one means horizontal line. The circle has center three zero and R square root of five. Now we need to find A plus B plus C plus D. So that means we have to find these points in the intersection. Look at this nice sketch here. Just imagine a circle, three zero is the center here. Three zero, see the center. Just make a circle and put line y equals one. This is a point, this is a point, you see? So that's what we need, these are the points. So what do we do? Just write the equation of a circle. You know that formula, x minus h squared, y minus k squared is equal r squared. So the circle we have, x minus three squared plus 
y squared is equal five. This is our circle. Even if you don't sketch it, this is our circle. Now the question says, the line, you see the line here will cut the circle, y equals one. So I go and replace one there in the equation, one squared. See one squared here. One squared, take it on the other side, becomes four, because there is a five there. Then this is a simple equation, quadratic, or power equation, power two, take the square root of both sides, so x will be five or one. Now look at the points here. One, one, that's one point here. One, one, and then five, one, because that's x and the y already one and one. See the y's are one, one. So the point one, one, x is one from here, five, one, x is the five from there. When you add one, one, five, one, the answer is eight. I know not easy question, but at least you can understand it. If the length of each side of a square is increased by three centimeters, that's a little application about linear equations. Okay, this is the explanation. So we have a square, let's call it the original square. And now we have a new square. See the length of each size is increased. Look at the question here. It is increased, increased here. You can see that increased by three centimeters. So we have a new square. So this is only explanation or sketch. You can call it, let X be the side of the original square. So we have X, 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 X. Here when you, when you increase the length of the side, you get X plus three, X plus three, X plus three, X plus three. Now what else? The parameter of the new square is 40 more than half the parameter of the original. See, parameter of any square, four times the each of the side. So here four times x plus three, here four times x. Let's continue now. So the parameter from the given, 40 plus half the four x. Four x is the original, the, the parameter of the original one. From formula we know, parameter four times the new side, four times the new side, like when you say four times W or four times X or four times Y. So put them equal here. So 40 plus half times four X, two X is equal to this one, four X plus three. So when you distribute here four X plus 12 and simplify the whole equation, two X is equal to 28. So X will be 14 centimeters. This is the side of the original one. Now the last question in this part, question 23, given the complex number z, cube root of minus 27 plus square root of minus four divided by i to the power four plus i to the power five, find four z, z bar. I think you know what is z bar. Z bar means you simplify the z in standard form and then you find its conjugate. Then you multiply z by z bar, then you multiply by four. Nice question. The answer 26, believe it or not. Let's see. Cube root, oh, look at the difference here. Cube root of minus 27, that's a real number. There is no i absolutely there because it's the, the index is odd. Square root of minus four is two i i to the power four is one, i to the power five is i. Now multiply by the conjugate directly here. And you know the story, a squared plus b squared, this time you multiply by FOIL method, you will get minus half plus five over two i, that's z. Now look at the z conjugate. Z conjugate, we change the sign of the imaginary part. We leave the real part, leave it. Now let's multiply z, this is z, this is z bar. Use STS, sum of two squares. So you multiply the first one squared, see, minus one over two, minus one over two becomes one over four. Plus this one, this one squared, so 25 over four. So this becomes 26 over four, same denominator. And there's already four in the question, you see here, four. So the final answer is 26. Thank you for watching. I hope I can see you in part three and then after that part four 
of this 50 old exams review questions. Thank you for watching and for your time.